this is the presentation for Glenbridge uh, Special Needs School. So here we have the two culprits, the partner, which is me, <laughs> and then uh, the principal, uh, which is Denville Dawson. So Denville is the uh, principal at the Glenbridge Special Needs School. School caters for uh, the kids with autism as well as kids with uh, severe intellectual disability or is that correct? And just, uh, I always get that part wrong. Um, so Denver and I have been placed together in this part of this journey. You now when we start off, and I think everyone started off the same from listening to the previous uh, presentations, is that it's almost like a feeling of a uh, arranged marriage, you know. <laughs> you don't know who you're going to partner with, you don't know if the partnership is going to fit. So, you know, leading up to us, our first meeting, the guys are all positive and say this thing is the best thing since sliced bread, you know, to be involved, giving back to the community. And that was always my dream, to give back to the community. And I thought it'd be best to do it in a schooling environment because Denim and I share the similar traits. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Similar traits uh, with respect to, you know, we, we both individuals that focus, goal oriented as well as like to impart knowledge. You know, both of our traits that we have. So effectively, a partnership was actually, uh, can I say, a match made in heaven, for, you know, <laughs> type of thing. Uh, we both like fishing. I work for a fishing company. Our, our hobbies are fishing. I, I promised him I'll take him out one day on my, on my, on my, uh, on my boat. And uh, we spend the day trying to catch some yellow tail. <laughs> but we haven't gotten there yet. So the partnership has kept us busy. Um, so, so Denville, you know, when, when I got there the first time, uh, Denville took me around. Um, Ernest actually was the person that introduced us. Denville took me around the school. And the thing that struck me the most was how the environment at the school, you know, the, 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 it's almost like a family environment. There's no, the, there's no barriers between the staff and the kids. And kids came to Denville running team. Whenever they see him, they're quite excited. Um, and they, on a first name basis, that was surprising to me because when I grew up, you call your, your sir, sir, and your, 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 your uh, madam, you call them miss, and nothing about Denville. But that was very striking to me. And he explained to me that you can't, with the, with the kids that he has and care for, you can't have additional barriers that you need to, to, to have between the two. So at the beginning, we had a partnership plan. The plan was, uh, you know, we didn't know exactly. It was the first time we met our, by ourselves after Ernest's introduction. We got together and said, okay, what's next? <laughs> and it was very uncomfortable because um, this is both our first time uh, on this journey. And we had a partnership plan. Ben was going to go into a bit more detail. And that partnership plan changed throughout the journey. And uh, yeah, I'm going to leave him to, to, to go into the detail. Else, I'll take a lot of time off. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jeremy, and good evening, everybody. Um, I think I'll fail if I do not just firstly thank um, Partners for Possibility for accepting uh, my application because I know I heard through um, my dealings that they don't really. I think Ernest told me they don't really take newly uh, appointed principals on the program and I was just appointed July, 1st of July 2016. So I'm very grateful for that opportunity firstly. Um, and thank you to Nikki and, and the staff that, that's always keeping us up to date with things. But um, before I go into the partnership plan I just also need to, to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, if you work with special needs education um, not only has your children got marginalized in the education or the, or the mainstream education system, they are marginalized at home because you have stigma, um, name calling, all those kind of things. So by the time they come to us, they little broken souls. And we take up the banner and I, I am a runaway monster truck when I deal with education departments and, and bureaucrats when it comes to my children. And I'm glad for this partnership because Jeremy is, is, 
He's the calming influence. He's the, he's the, the thinker. Uh, he's the, the one where I can offload um, and, and he will put it in perspective um, with the principles of time to think and those, those along those lines and it, and it really helped me with my journey forward. Um, so much so that with our, uh, or my approach with, I'll show you in a bit, um, I changed with what I, did, what I eventually did. Okay, so but background of my school. Uh, those of you residing deep river Eastfield to Kai area probably drove past the school a million times and didn't realize it was Glenbridge Special School. Um, there's a little picture. A vision statement obviously to develop, to develop and nurture each child to his or her full potential, short and sweet. And we do this by uh, creating socially acceptable and integrated uh, learners self-sufficient and independent learners and emotionally ready to enter the workplace. But we also additionally help people studying in our field um, because it's, it's, it's rare that you get people wanting to go into special needs. Anyway, so uh, we, through our partnership we identified three main challenges. Obviously number one for any school is budget. Number one, budget. Then we looked at transport and infrastructure. Um, when we looked at a budget, this is up until September this year, for a school with 134 learners, we spent 2.2 million rand. We only got 2 million in. So there's a huge short shortfall. We serve areas such as Lavender Hill, Retreat, Steenberg, uh, Grassy Park, places where there's not a lot of income. So that's next year's budget. You can see it's another challenge for us. So when we looked at this and uh, when I inherited the lovely small tiny office, I inherited a huge SARS bill. And when Jeremy, I was so glad Jeremy's in finance, I was like, please help me. What are we doing here? So that's one of the things that it's not completed in a, in a partnership. Um, but we looked at cost saving measures like insurance cover and premiums because we can't deal or do anything about the income from the WCD, that set amount. Uh, in this economic climate you can't do anything about what the parents can afford to give you. So we had to look at other avenues. So we looked at insurance cover and premiums, copiers and telephone systems and such and, and we deep into um, doing something about that. With transport, we looked at driver behavior because driver behavior directly influences learner safety and that's important. That's our number one. That's our clients. It also influences fuel costs because it's another cost-saving measure. And lastly, it in influences uh, your insur insurance premiums. So to that effect, we had smart trackers fitted to our vehicles. You can pull reports, you, can, you get a uh, ping on your phone, this driver is, is um, speeding and things and there's another feature which is not uh, operational yet but I can shut that vehicle down exactly where I want to which is awesome. Then we looked at oh infrastructure. The WCED in the infinite wisdom puts up these prefab classes because we have a long long waiting list for both for severely intellectual disabled learners and for learners with autism. And the only way we could accommodate them is to put up these prefab classes. But they encroach on us on our playgrounds. So we consequently have staggered play times now. The juniors play at a certain time, intermediates play at a certain time, and seniors play at a certain time. Um, and then this, <laughs> this is where my monster truck had to be calmed down and toned back again. The top photo is taken from this corner over here. The bottom photo is taken from the lamppost over here. And that's a empty school owned by the Department of Public Works, which we have applied for on numerous, numerous occasions. But unfortunately, a neighboring school has been promised the building and the neighboring school in paper said that they want a art department, a little museum, um, 
and a library in that building and and uh, dealing with the department I was I was a maniac you will give me the, I will expose each and every name I can find to the media or else you know and through interaction with Jeremy and I think it was um, flawless consulting that really really changed my mind and changed my approach on on how I should go about um, we then had a plan put together uh, executed the plan and I must say uh, things are afoot things are looking up it's not it's not given to us yet but uh, the director in the district of infrastructure contacted me already um, and things are looking up things are looking up so well done <laughs> oh sorry this is our reality too because when deep revives people think it's awesome nothing happens our school becomes a shopping center for thieves over weekends and holidays and it's it again costs money the bottom part is one of those prefabs that's opened like a tin of sardines to get to Ritalin yeah. which they use in methamphetamines okay I'm speaking too much thank you okay I'm just gonna sum up uh, basically you can see how passionate this guy is about special needs schools and his job and I say this every day we've all have had another realization here before we started that I wouldn't take this job for a million bucks <laughs> it is very difficult I can I can understand there's pressures from many many different angles from the governing body from the school from the the kids the teachers the parents and you know I have to take my hat off not just for Denver but for the all the principals in the room <coughs> that go through this on a daily basis I thought it may be fitting to put in some learnings from my side because my boss is sitting over there <laughs> and uh, I thought the greatest learnings that I had is two maybe one is regarding the, the phrase or the question that you asked you ask yourself is when you're in a situation and you, you let things fester for example if you've got a staff member that's problematic and you you keep on moaning about this guy's not doing his work etc etc and the one question that came to mind at flawless consulting is what is your role in that situation you know what is your role so when you put your hand on your heart you have to say to yourself I allowed it to fester I allow these things to happen and when I look at these things I can now apply that question to my every day without going and moaning and so I hope Brendan feels that my moaning becomes becomes less and less because when I asked that question for myself I didn't think I need to do something about it and it even works at home you know, when you get home, you want to watch the Champions League game, your wife comes and moans about the day and say, you know, I ask her the question, what is your role in this? <laughs> <laughs> then she turns around and they go to the room and then, just, then I can watch my game in peace. <laughs> but, yeah, that's one of the learnings. And the other one was how to contract with someone. You know, people come across my desk and you'll, we never believe in finance all the issues comes to you I don't know how it comes to you finance or non finance related stuff and I always have to contact with people and say I, I'll, I'll give you some time but only have a minute no. so if you can if you can contextualize this thing in a minute then fine I'm, I'll, I'm all ears otherwise I need to do something and then after a while they tape off the people don't come to you anymore because they know <laughs> I'm gonna put that in front of them and say you know I'll contact with you two minutes or a minute or whatever and then that's done so it is it increases your efficiency by the way actually so where to from here uh, Demo spoke about the, the project plan and the, 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 the um, activities we're busy with there's some unresolved matters so I can also say that uh, this partnership is, is going to continue it's hopefully it grows from strength to strength and uh, yeah whether Demo like it or not I'll be in his face for for the foreseeable future <laughs> so yeah um, I think the next slide is just to thank everyone uh, I'd like to thank Nikki and the team Louise in the absence and uh, Melissa as well all the emails and the follow-up emails sorry about that <laughs> um, and then also uh, Brendan and the INJ directorship for allowing me to be here I, as I said in the beginning I always wanted to give back to the community and they allowed for that for me to happen 
and in working hours no home. So I get paid to give back to the community. <laughs> so uh, that's the, so thank you to INJ as well. And then last but not least, the circle. The circle of friends. <laughs> no, it's been a, a joyous occasion. It's been, uh, I think we all had fun. Yes. Uh, fun in the workshops, fun in our, our cop sessions. Um, yeah, no, we always look forward to, to, to seeing each other. Yeah, and that's the thank you from, from our side. Thank you. So the remarkable thing about this partnership in particular is that um, both of them are quite, quite serious about what they do. The amount of energy and frustration that you heard Denville express, you would never experience inside the school. When we visited the school, there was this cool cucumber walking around with all these things going on, telling us these stories about the children that run and disappear over there and how he's got to chase after them and keep them safe and bring them back. I left there going, oh my word, what an incredibly committed individual and what a committed partnership this has been. Well done both of you on sustaining the journey and I do know, you called me and said, can I have my portfolio of evidence next week, so I'm giving you an <laughs> acknowledgement. <laughs>